the theorem we, we started to prove yesterday. So I, I recall that uh, we, we have a field, so Vt, which is the solution, uh, which is the difference of U1T and U0 T. And for this Vt, we have written down an equation, which is this one. Vt plus Fr d v one R T plus M uh, V T V Y T plus uh, yes plus L R U not T plus F R and here the difference. So the, in fact uh, we have already done this this step. So I should have started that a bit uh, later part. So this is for us the difference between these uh, increasing processes, which uh, corresponds to the time change, is denoted by a. Uh, TR and then moreover we, we do another uh, uh, we introduce another process the WT which is the VT the VT minus the LR U not T plus FR multiplied by this ATR and in fact for us the important thing is to have an equation for the WT and from that equation we estimate that the WT that, that estimate will give us an estimate for the VT what we need because th this part is controlled so we put here a part which is controlled well because we can easily see that this ATR is of order a in the, what was that tau so the, the <coughs> next size the, the difference between the, the time changes is proportional to to tau the mesh size so this one is controlled as 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 we want to in case the u naught if we have an estimate for the u naught and if that is uh, that has l plus two derivatives and estimating but that uh, that is done so the important thing is okay for equation for the wt and in fact we don't need that one i am sorry that i uh, have written down the, this the important thing is the equation for the WT and that uh, we have this, this is the form you have written I suppose or have seen already and V V1 R plus F not j d v not j t m w t plus g d y t and the the f r one is l r l j u naught plus fj and a d j again a good thing we see that here is the a t j which is which is estimated by by tau and f j naught is <coughs> minus 
in I wrote first the A, A, D, R, L, R, yes, that's correct, and L, R, L, J, U, not, um, plus F, J, and the G is M L R minus M uh, minus L, so the commutator of these two operators, L R and M, <coughs> acting on U naught, multiplied again by the A T e R, which is good, and M F R minus L R G, multiplied again by by A R. So we have an equation. This one is our basic equation now for, for the W process. And we have well defined free terms. So we need the following existence and or uh, existence uniqueness result and mostly estimate is the the important thing. So the following theorem. <coughs> Oops, do I why do I use red now? Black. Is is the red readable more than or not? Not really. Okay, sorry. Okay. So the theorem that uh, uh, let us consider this uh, equation L u plus f and and with an increasing process v t continues m rho u plus g rho d y rho t is an initial condition And the following assumptions. So uh, I remind you that L is A I J L D I D J plus A I D I plus A. Similarly, M rho is B I rho D I plus B rho. So these operators. And to formulate the theorem, we take a non-negative integer m. C denotes a constant, and, and also we take a fix. Fixed time interval 0, capital T. And then the, the assumptions, so first regularity of the, of the coefficients, so the a i j and so on, uh, B rho coefficients and their derivatives in X up to order uh, oops, up to order M and A I J up to order M maximum two exist and are continuous functions, continuous functions in X and bounded in magnitude by a constant C. And I just realized that here, in fact, uh, that is not correct. We assume that M is greater than or equal to 1 here. And uh, for the three terms, F is an HM value predictable process. Uh, G rho is 
age m plus 1 valued predictable and the u naught is, is in age m f not measurable and assume that the that this uh, KM capital T now looks like this oops this is psi M squared plus expectation integral from 0 to T F uh, M norm plus G uh, and squared squared G M plus 1 norm uh, dt is finite. Here we sum up the squares of the of the of the norms of the coordinates, right? And and finally the the parabolicity is the the generate parabolicity condition. Uh, I write instead of the instead of the equation, we have that in mind. Professor Chodi, can you just explain the, 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 the second part of part one? An AIJ up to order M max. The, the yes, this, this means that, uh, uh, that um, when M is one only, then we require two derivatives from the main coefficients to be bounded, continuous and bounded. Obviously, this is not a restriction if m is greater than or equal to 2. Yes, But when we want to formulate the, you will see first the, the statement, and then, then maybe it will be more, more understandable. So the parabolicity condition, now this is the third. <coughs> We formulate like this that so V is increasing continuous predictable. I think I have already told that starting from zero do I write that as an index? Yeah, okay. And at capital T, let us take it bounded by that constant uh, constant C and assume that the Y process is a martingale, continuous martingale. So Y is continuous martingale or local martingale, doesn't matter. D the two uh, d one dimensional and assume that the the uh, quadratic variation process which is just the same in that case as the Dubmeyer process so I denote it like this maybe we have seen denoted <coughs> by the right bracket but these are the same so this one is less than or equal than dv uh, dvt so the corresponding measures are so the, this measure is dominated by that one and and assume that for all t x omega and z we have this hierarchy this way now z j dvt minus one half B I rho, B J rho, uh, Z I Z J, D Y uh, here. Oh, okay. Oops. Not good. Sorry. 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 I should have paid attention more. Let me write here K and L, and then so instead of rho, I should have two, but so maybe K and L, I write here and here. D 
d y k y l and t then this is greater than or equal to zero uh, so for all for all z in r d and for all here we have the dependence on t and also <coughs> on x so for all t and x and omega or we can say that for almost every t and omega with respect to the product measure for all z and x uh, we have this so all right then the statement is so we can we can easily remember uh, these these two this is the only new thing here uh, with the previous one which one should pay attention that that here for, for from the g1 more derivatives and also from the main term one uh, two more derivatives or, or up um, minimum at least two derivatives are, are needed all right if we have these assumptions then well, then there exists there exists a unit solution It is U is a H uh, weakly continuous H M valued process. It is strongly continuous with values in H M minus one, and this estimate and the uh, and the following estimate holds and the supremum of the solution norm squared in in the HM norm expectation is less than or equal than a constant times the KM that, oops, did I use the k? But again, I probably forgot to write that the, the square. It's always better to have the right homogeneity. <coughs> so my notation for for that expression is k uh, k squared and not not k. All right. So this uh, this is the this is the theorem. So let us discuss uh, a little bit. So the so first look at look at this one this, uh, this condition so in the in the special case when when v is the dt or oh, first of all how how do we understand this condition in the in the sense of of measures yes integrating in the sense of measures okay we 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 can rewrite it and maybe it is more understandable than if I rewrite it or will be more similar to what I told you in my first lecture. So when the WT is T and the Y is the Wiener process, then, then you see here we have the DT and here we have also the DT and the summation goes only for uh, for the uh, k equals l so then we get back the usual stochastic parabolicity condition with the ex uh, exception that it is weaker because here we don't have a positive kappa times the z square so this is uh, kappa here is, is zero so this is why one calls this degenerate equation so how to prove the degenerate case so the case when here we have uh, the t and here just in that case when t and uh, and v and the uh, Wiener process then one can deduce it from the result which you have already learned from 
from the lectures by, by Kurov by using, for example, the method of vanishing viscosity that one first had uh, the equation some couple of times the, the Laplacian in the, in the drift term in order to make it uh, <coughs> uh, uh, non-degenerate. But then some work should be done that, that for that equation, the estimate should be independent of the kappa which is added. That can be done. And then uh, when one has that, in fact, well, the estimate is needed first for the case m equals 1. And when that is done, then one can one can get already the solution, but the same thing can uh, can be get the solution by by taking the limit in the equation. The same thing can be repeated with with, with m as well. So it takes some time to uh, to explain, but this is more or less the standard method method how to how to get this. And in fact, this is well written in the paper. Uh, by Krov and Rosowski, and also you can find it uh, in the book by, by Rosowski. No, so this is the case when, when we have the T and the Wiener process. Just the same procedure works in the, in the more general case. Then one uses Ito's formula with, the, uh, in, with, uh, with that generality I, I have shown in my first lecture, and then just copying the method when we have here T and, and the Wiener process, we get, uh, we get the result. By the way, in my first lecture, I formulated the assumption a little bit differently uh, that one can do. Also, you remember, one can introduce this uh, uh, one can rewrite this uh, in the following way that, that uh, uh, one shows that there exists such a matrix, let's say Q, um, uh, I, uh, Q, K, L, uh, such that the, the Q, K, L, D, W, uh, T, gives the d uh, y k y l uh, differential. This is because we assume this follows this in some work <laughs> on this assumption that there exists such a predictable uh, process that we can write it like this. So then in fact, another way of formulating this assumption is to have here the QKL dVT, and then what we would say is that that then the more usual maybe formulation is that this must hold dVT. Almost every, for almost every omega, dVT almost every t for all z and x. So this is another way of, of, of writing this assumption. In fact, I used in my first lecture, I took the square root of I took the square root of this uh, cube. So if one takes the square root then redefining, so this quadratic form can be rewritten by redefining the, uh, uh, defining B uh, tilde, let's say B tilde and I uh, J or I now rho uh, uh, like this, that the B, uh, this is I, uh, J, and this is the J row. So by this, then the one which 
which uh, this the previous quadratic form can be written in the usual way that is as we as we got used to it so then b tilde i rho b j rho uh, here instead of the so we you just can put q into the definition of the new just to have the similar step okay anyway this is not important the important thing is that we have such a theorem with, with this estimate and so we can use uh, when we look at this um, equation for the w then we can use that theorem here you see two but then we can take v to be the sum of all, all the, all the uh, increasing processes, what, what we have here. This is for, for R and for, for Epsilon. Then we get an increasing process. Then we can rewrite our equation uh, into that form. Then here, the, just the Radon Nicodine derivative multiplies, but that, that is a a non-negative number less than one multiplies and one can put exactly into into that form right here the the uh, quadratic variation process of y uh, so uh, the the measure defined by the quadratic vari uh, variation process so what is the quadratic variation process of y it must be something like the constant how many we have uh, uh, d2 and that kappa, kappa t which is one of them so that therefore we have this assumption we have this assumption satisfied the one which is here and so we rewrite it we use the, the theorem and then from that theorem uh, what we get is that the that the expectation supremum wt let's say l norm squared is less than or equal then the initial condition is zero and then we should then estimate the we should write down the corresponding KL term so estimate this one now look at this here first of all let us take out the uh, the supremum in T in omega, in fact, it doesn't depend on omega, on the zero uh, capital T interval. So let, let me write just an A, which I already mentioned proportional to what is this A. So that A is um, just the supremum of the A R. Uh, J or what uh, the epsilon there, there is no J, we just have one or uh, one or or zero in the the T was ri uh, written in parentheses when I was careful. So we take supremum, ah, I don't, yes, I need to have, uh, have this to my not really, no, it is not negative. Uh, psilon and with respect to R, so this is the A from here. And then you see the, um, here one should write the integral expectation and uh, uh, the, <coughs> L plus uh, L plus four norm 
Yes, this is uh, 2 plus 2, second order. So L plus 4 norm squared. Here the F comes, uh, that is, uh, it's enough for, uh, for, the, for the F. I just, uh, okay, some. <coughs> And that is uh, enough. The L plus two. Uh, that's uh, that's right. And here, that okay. And there is also a, a constant which I forgot and always forget. There is the constant L. Okay. So there is this N constant A, and uh, from here, very similar estimate so nothing really new and and then for the for the g we see that um, this commutator in fact this is uh, only uh, it, it gives two derivatives but uh, we can use three doesn't uh, doesn't really matter but but in fact it uh, uses two but we should add one so therefore let us write plus three, but 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 that we do not need to add because we have already this here, so uh, that's all right. And uh, and for the g, we have uh, plus plus three. Uh, L plus plus three squared and then the d d v t we can easily check that the that also i forgot to say but we can easily check that this is bounded uh, by a constant so in order to use that one and what remains is uh, just to to have an estimate for the solution uh, in L plus 4 naught in uh, of the uh, equation for U naught from the same theorem we have that and, uh, and finally we know this which is which is easy that the, that this A is less is proportional less than or equal than than a constant times uh, tau in fact when when we have only two, then, then this will be uh, just uh, tau, uh, estimated by tau. Uh, look at the original picture. Here we have tau, two tau. So one was like this, and then, and the other is shifted. And you see that the distance between the two is tau when we have more then the distance is, is a couple of times tau, right? Or then even that case, it remains tau. Anyway, for, uh, it is sure that it can be estimated like, uh, like n times tau. So therefore, from here, we get that, uh, oops, I, I forgot to take the square. Yes, when I estimate, and take it, then that should be squared. So here, here there is the square as well, and therefore we have, uh, and that's it. That is that is what we wanted to prove. So this is the sketch. Maybe I made some details omitted, but is that all right? So the, yeah. So uh, this visual uh, implies that uh, your expression of method uh, works. So uh, my question is, uh, there, uh, at this step, you also the view equation with uh, which contains the horizon and uh, 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 the remaining equations follow. But how about if you change it? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. This, uh, uh, this is a very good thing to think about. You can change the order. 
have uh, that the same kind of thing can be can be done. Then you rewrite. Uh, then the the u not u one equation will be changed, but nothing else. Uh, then a further question: What what happens if we have dependence on on time, and that is usually not considered even in the deterministic case, or very rarely, especially the semi-group method that is quite a mess when uh, when one has the time-dependent case. So therefore, let me say just a few words about that as well, and that. I think covers then the uh, the an my answer to this question with a bit more generality. So the time dependent case Then uh, one, one need, needs to have a, another condition uh, how the, uh, the coefficients depend on, on time. And then this condition is that uh, uh, let us consider the coefficients collected into one big row. Uh, so these are the coefficients. Uh, but one needs to consider only these coefficients and free term for gamma 1, 2, and we have, I think, d2, the 0 is not uh, considered, and assume that there exists uh, a martingale z uh, that t such that uh, it is a multi-valued with some d rho, let's say, or even more. I I, I don't know. So multi-valued, and then um, assume that the d z is dominated by the d. Uh, Vt, which is which is defined already as the sum of all, and then assume that this H has a stochastic differential so that it can be written for each x as H not x plus integral from zero to t H. Um, now this not is uh, uh, that here we integrate with respect to the basic uh, increasing process. And then here uh, we have <coughs> hr s x dz. So this is multi-valued multi with respect to the continuous, again, continuous multi-view. And in applications that, that uh, that situation happens, and and such that the h not h r and their derivatives up to order l plus one. If I would like to get the the result here, which uh, which is with l, are continuous and bounded. Then, by this technique, just the same result is obtained in the same way, but with more calculations. The, the calculations comes when we integrate by parts. You remember, we write down the equation for the w. There, we, we or first for the v. There, we integrate by parts. When we have time dependence, that should be taken into account. And if we assume that it has stochastic, that uh, these coefficients have stochastic differential, then that can be taken into account, and just the same <coughs> calculation uh, calculations go go through. So then the same theorem we get, but 
to before seeing that the same theorem we get, we should understand how to define in this case the uh, the, the, the splitting up calculations. So now we have the time dependent case. So one way is to write it. So one possible way is that the un t at t i plus 1 is defined as starting from the un t i. So recursively, we want to then just before we first use the <coughs> Uh, e i e i plus one so the the stochastic uh, uh, so the pde the zero equation and then we we use s let's say one and here i put t i plus one and so on and then s here we had d2 if i remember well uh, T inside, I put T i plus 1. And what does this mean? That when we use the S, some R, and here I write, let's say, a T, then this means that the coefficients of the, on the, of the corresponding uh, differential operator and also of the free terms are frozen at time T. So this means that here they are frozen at time t i plus 1. So then we solve again a time independent, each step a time independent equation. And then if we do like this and uh, require those uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, assumptions to be satisfied, then exactly the same, same result is exactly the same method works. And now uh, we can we can do other things as well. So we can we can uh, we can start with uh, we can do in other order. And now I am uh, answering I I think your question that we start with S one let's say, but then we have to froze at T i, then apply this to u t i and then also maybe we do that with until s r always frozen at t i now we apply the uh, the zero equation which is the stochastic equation that we uh, from t i to t i plus one we can do that Notice that uh, that we so far what we got is at the i measurable when we have a stochastic uh, random coefficient there. So okay, and then we and then we do the i. Uh, oh, sorry, what I'm saying this is only one, and then we continue s i plus one here frozen at the i plus one now. Before that, frozen at t i, then frozen at t i plus one, and then um, t i plus one. Yes. In the time depend independent case, this means we can do in in any in any order. Right. That this is the second third possibility. Well, let's we start with the S1, and then from TI uh, to, no, and I, I, no, I don't give now the third, uh, the third one. There is a third one as well, but I haven't sold that well enough. So uh, let us, let us enough yeah, about this. So uh, just to say the proof, doesn't differ, just we change accordingly our time scale when we rearrange in forward time and the same method works. So, 
So therefore, that's what. Now I oops, yeah. Just notation the operator S. Operator S. Yes, we. Uh, the 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 there must be ti plus one minus ti. Ti plus one. No. So that is what I wanted to write. So this operator means that we uh, that in the corresponding equation <coughs> we solve a time independent right. equation where that I put here the ti plus one means that the coefficients and free terms are taken and fixed at ti plus one. So don't you don't you need to put some tau there? No, I don't know. You're sorry. I, oh, 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 you're right. You're right. Sorry, sorry. To be now, I understood your question. To be consistent with my notation, you're absolutely right. I, I should have written everywhere at the tau because we we solve it on a. So here we have the tau. Here we have the tau. Thank you very much. And also now I remember. Uh, your other question that why why is so natural that we have the convergence of, of the splitting up method uh, for the first place why why that is so natural and uh, let us consider the, and I just mentioned that Trotter Trotter theorem Trotter formula yes there is such thing but but that uh, that still should be explained why this is. Uh, why we expect that there is a convergence and even more why we expect that the, the rate must be first order that is the error is proportional to tau so uh, let us just consider ordinary differential equations and linear instead of this uh, more difficult case so uh, x dot equals ax with some initial condition and then the other one x dot equals bx with some initial condition this is when we split the equation that x dot equals a plus bx so for simplicity just uh, we have finite dimensional so uh, a and b are matrices fixed constant matrices then we we can easily solve this yes that uh, the solution can be written like a e to the a t so let us just consider the first uh, uh, part when we do it until tau so then the splitting means that this uh, use and then the other one a tau in order to get when starting from an initial condition here in order to get the approximation at time tau yes first oops oh, i wanted to write b yes. and uh, this is the approximation for here the solution we know uh, e on the first e a plus b times tau on, on psi and in fact when a and b commute then we, we have exactly the same so no surprise the, the problem is when, when they do not commute but then the what we need is just to see the difference between the two and there are formulas which are used here in the semi-group the house of Campbell and there is a third one uh, formula but in this uh, it, we, we just can easily calculate that that okay this operator is uh, identity plus a plus b times tau plus one half a plus b squared tau plus and so on and then for the <coughs> e a tau is i plus a tau plus one half a squared uh, tau sorry also squared <coughs> right uh, and uh, squared e 
B tau plus plus uh, of D B squared tau squared here higher order terms or just like big old tau squared and now when we when we just multiply and take the take the difference then we can see that it's known let's say in operator norms is less than or equal than a constant times tau squared because the first order disappears so that means that in each step locally we have an error of tau squared so adding up uh, how many proportional uh, that number is proportional to 1 over tau so therefore the error is, is tau so in the, with, with a hand waving argument one can get this but uh, okay and uh, and Trotter theorem uh, generalizes uh, but without <laughs> estimates to these two uh, generators A and B of uh, C0 semigroups which are contractive <coughs> and uh, on a Banach space and uh, assumes that the A and B uh, domain intersection is dense in that Banach space then one can get that uh, uh, that the a uh, a t over n a b t over n times n converges to the or starting with um, converges to the a So this is just uh, in the semi-group language in a si simple situation without simple, not so simple, without estimates, uh, just the convergence result. Uh, but the, this method, what we uh, presented and which can be found in the papers with Professor Kuro that I have written down, uses completely different approach and we think it is essentially more powerful even in the deterministic case it gives better results than yeah the convergence is, is true even uh, a b doesn't commit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like <coughs> like here we uh, doesn't come yes the the assumptions for the total theorems is that a and b are a c0 uh, generators of c0 semi-group of contractions the the domain intersections of the domain must be dense in the or on the Banach, uh, in the Banach space uh, dense set and then one one get uh, this convergence in the in the Banach space one one takes uh, psi from the domain okay uh, what else I wanted I I think I think I I finished what I wanted. Um, 15. 15 minutes. So I, I start to accelerate my <coughs> lectures. And uh, I would like to speak now about the acceleration of, of this splitting up method, but uh, only first and uh, only in fact for uh, PDEs, the deterministic PDEs. So it turns out that that simple method which, which uh, we have seen for the stochastic case with some more work and in fact very torturing computations, calculations are involved, can be used to get an expansion <coughs> for, the, uh, uh, for the splitting up approximation. So this is what I would like to formulate now. But first I also write, I it is written there in the previous part but there wasn't in the in the notes there is a previous part where we show that in fact the rate of convergence that is the that is the order one that the error is uh, estimated by tau cannot be improved in general we, we show that for pdes and spdes in, the, in one of the papers i have written here 
But it turns out that by using the uh, Richardson idea, which, which we have talked about already, and also Eric, one can get uh, better, so one can get uh, higher order uh, accuracy, but for that one needs to have a, an expansion. So this is what we will formulate how one can get an expansion. Now, again, I formulate here the, the splitting. So we consider only a deterministic one. You see this one. This is our uh, starting equation, which we want to approximate by splitting method. By the way, I was asked why that is useful. Uh, for example, dimension split, splitting. If you have, a, for example, the Laplacian, or somehow you can separate the de derivations in then, for example, in the case of Laplacian, you can consider just two derivations in one direction. This is one, one equation. And the other equation, two derivations. So there are many, many uses. So this is a very popular method in numerical analysis. Uh, right. Good. So we, we have this uh, splitting. These are the splitting equations. And uh, Right, and here I, I consider the <coughs> also these free terms and the same kind of, uh, so we have seen this uh, more general with the stochastic term. So that us, oops, okay. So it is known in the literature that, uh, that there are splitting up approximations which are more accurate than uh, than, the, than just what we, what we had, but uh, there, uh, for example, this one, which is called the strand uh, splitting. Oops, sorry, I am very bad in, in using. Uh, so this, this one, so-called symmetric splitting, this type of splitting is, has accuracy better than, uh, than tau. So the, the one which we mentioned uh, has that uh, sharp estimate with tau. So uh, what can you see here? That uh, on the half interval, uh, one uses uh, one after the other all the operators. Then symmetrically, one repeats the same. And it turns out that it is, it is better. Right. Um, now, even more, oops. Uh, this example suggests that one can uh, consider so-called fractional step approximations when just uh, for each, uh, in one cycle, just a fraction of, of, of the tau is used and then runs through several cycles. And then one should find a suitable um, Cij numbers in order to uh, to estimate uh, the at least lo the local error, this one uh, the fir first time, and and then get the uh, something for for the if the local error is proportional to tau k plus one, in appropriate norms then the global error. Uh, one expects is tau k, and in fact one can one can do uh, this. Uh, one can find, and in the literature there are uh, the splitting up method with, of, of higher order, but not for parabolic uh, equations. Just a minute uh, to that, or you ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. <coughs> so here, here a remark that in fact. One can, uh, one can, that fractional step method, which we have uh, just seen, can, can put into our framework as, as well by, by using uh, um, other type of, of splitting, but le let's go faster. Now, uh, the important information is that such methods are obtained for, for uh, systems of ODEs, and for some classes of linear and also nonlinear equations, but it is also shown that uh, that it 
is not possible to find all C i j to be uh, non-negative in order to get uh, an order higher than or equal to three for parabolic uh, or higher say, for the equation. So when we try to find these numbers such that uh, such that we get uh, uh, higher than or equal to three the order, then necessarily there will be negative amounts e. C I J. That means that one cannot use this. That that means that then we can have a, a, a mixture of a, of solutions corresponding to different uh, uh, grid sizes. So I don't want to uh, to repeat that. So we I think know this. Also this notation. And now well, I would like to formulate a result which says that this is possible, we can have the expansion. So for that, as usual, assumption one means that uh, we have um, regularity from the coefficients. You see, again, with L up to order L, they, we have uh, continuous and bounded derivatives of the coefficient and also the initial value here instead of L2 spaces I formulated or we formulated in LP spaces the, the result uh, and then second that the matrices should be non-negative the main uh, term in the equations should be non-negative the corresponding matrices should be non-negative definite then uh, I repeat it here by the solution because uh, in fact, uh, in the degenerate case, uh, one okay that doesn't uh, the, the solution is, is uh, definition is straightforward by using again test functions. But now the solution a solution is a w one p valued weekly continuous function such that in the uh, in the sense uh, using test functions the equation is satisfied. And then one knows, in fact, this is a special case of a result for SPDEs known as well uh, by, by a paper, Krov uh, and Rosowski. So from the PDU theory, one knows that there exists when n greater than or equal to 1, then there exists a unique solution. So we have a unique solution for every equation. And now the theorem is that if we fix M and uh, K, K is how many uh, up to what uh, order we we can have the uh, the Taylor let's say Taylor expansion, and if the in the formulation the L, which is the regularity, how many derivatives we need, is greater than four. You remember that at, at, at k, k equals 0, we have just the same, and uh, n plus 4. So L greater than or equal 4 plus m plus 4k. Then we have an expansion on the grid in T and in S on the, on the whole space. So as, as before, the u1, u2, and so on are uh, independent of tau and there is a remainder term where which has the necessary estimate independently of tau and then well, by using this one can do the uh, now the proof yes the part two is so the, the proof uses as I mentioned just the same time change technique then also that integration bypass technique, but then from there one should get out these, these, these powers of tau and also one should um, get the, the u1, u2 function, so that is a very long uh, calculations and that can be found in a, in a paper given, given here uh, in the references, uh, I'm not able to repeat that within one or even two 
uh, lecture, so that is why that was a so uh, yeah 40 40 pages. Of, uh, of uh, calculation, so that was really uh, of mathematics. <laughs> so once one uh, gets the idea how to do that, that it is okay, but still to implement the idea is quite hard. So, I, but I'm happy to explain if anyone is interested in the key steps, and then it will be uh, understandable. So I I skip. I here I repeat uh, how to get the, the time change, but probably within a couple of minutes you, you, can't, you can't really follow. So, but anyway, just the same thing that <coughs> rearranging in forward time, therefore we introduce this AR. Now it is a little bit disturbing because used, uh, <coughs> earlier I used VR for these uh, re, uh, scale functions. And uh, and then rewrite the equations, the the uh, splitting up method into one equation and the original one by time synchronization, and so this is the um, the a naught scale is for the original equation, so this one, and then the uh, the. The W now is used uh, for the, where, but where is the W? Have I written, here is the W. Yes, here is the W. It's written down here with using these uh, time scales. And that is related to the splitting up. And, uh, and then just from here, I'm afraid I, I can't explain, so I uh, didn't even write down. And then one knows already how to get the uh, uh, acceleration. So with the mixing, so this is the theorem that we can then buy the mixture, which is now the Vn. One can get uh, uh, k plus one order accuracy. But uh, the, the proof is obvious, so we can skip it. And also Eric uh, showed now an interesting remark, maybe interesting, that the more zeros we have in the expansion, the better the situation. And one can describe uh, in this uh, framework um, sufficient and necessary conditions in order to u1 vanish. And and then one can realize that the strength symmetric scheme is one of them which satisfies, but there are many, many. One describes in these schemes where the, uh, the starting spitting up method is of already of order tau square. One more um, remark, and then I finish. Uh, uh, that you remember that when we did the, uh, the, uh, the finite difference schemes, that we took H, which was kind of the mesh size, to be negative as well. And I mentioned that it has some reason. And uh, the reason uh, there was that if we notice that in, in N, that with respect to taking the negative H, our scheme is symmetric, then the expansion must be uh, invariant with respect to the change h to minus h. But if that in, it is invariant, that means that the even powers must uh, vanish there. So in fact, all the even powers in the expansion are zeros. And that, again, create a very good situation because we need essentially less uh, number, ter number of uh, mm, approximations to mixture in order to get a, a high order one. Uh, I don't know whether this is the time to stop already. Thank you very much. That was all.